I'll be honest, I couldn't come up with anything for this video's intro, but I am just as excited to talk about it as you are. So in the words of Wolverine, let's fucking go. My name is Ren, and this is my review of Deadpool and Wolverine. Welcome back, Marvel family. Thank you for joining me for our one and only MCU movie review of 2024 about one of the most exciting cinematic and comic book team-ups that only took us 24 fucking years to get. Where we follow a listless Wade Wilson who toils away in civilian life with his days as the morally flexible mercenary Deadpool behind him. But when his homeworld faces an existential threat from the TVA, Wade must reluctantly suit up again and travel across the multiverse with an even more reluctant Wolverine. And I cannot tell you how excited I've been for this film. Yes, for all the obvious reasons. I grew up reading comic books. I love the MCU. I love the Deadpool movies. But just between Deadpool 2 and now Deadpool and Wolverine, so much has changed in our world, in the Hollywood studio system, in the comic book movie landscape. Hugh Jackman has already retired as the character of Wolverine. The Fox universe doesn't exist anymore, so now it needs to be brought over into the MCU and Deadpool along with it. You have all these chaotic elements within the movies and outside of them. Bringing them together can feel more true to the character of Deadpool, who, in typical meta fashion, takes full advantage of all this. And it just feels so damn great to see Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. And his hilarious banter with the always pitch perfect Ryan Reynolds is the heart that makes this movie work over its convoluted multiverse plot, where despite the figurative and literal messiness, I had a huge smile on my face all through this film. I was cheering, I was crying, I was surprised because it's a movie that understands who it is and Sean Levy, one of the most underrated directors working out there, manages to find a perfect balance between the absurd fourth wall breaking humor of the film and the character and perfectly marry it to the poignant emotional core at the heart of these characters and at the heart of this story. It's vulgar, it's violent, it's skating, and it's ultimately touching. It's an R-rated romp that holds nothing back when delivering anything and everything its fan base wants with maximum effort, seamlessly jumping from nostalgia cameo-fueled adventure to a genuinely sweet and honest celebration of the Fox legacy of superhero movies, which started it all when it comes to bringing these movies, these stories, and these characters to life. And that is exactly what Deadpool and Wolverine reveals itself to be as a film. A surprisingly poignant farewell to the Fox universe, celebrating the value of the flawed concepts and rejected ideas that paved the way for the MCU to be and are now an integral part of how the MCU can evolve. A story celebrating underdogs, giving them their moment in the sun, showing they matter. That's the entire DNA of this now Deadpool movie trilogy, and how Disney signed off on this absolutely ridiculous film that is all about celebrating some other studio superhero legacy is beyond me, but I am so happy it exists as it does because it gave me everything I wanted and somehow far more. It is all at once a love letter, a parody, and somehow a genuine Fox Marvel and MCU proper films rolled into one with a ton of heart, terrific action, great laughs, and this is a spoiler free review, so don't bother asking for specifics. Oh, oh so, so many, so many cameos, 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 and Easter eggs. You can almost say there's a little bit of movie amidst all the cameos and surprises here where this film not only exists as the literal bridge between these two universes, but delivers all the cameo insanity 
we expected in Multiverse of Madness without losing the specific identity of this franchise. This isn't a blink and you'll miss it kind of situation. This is a movie about underdogs. The underdogs get a moment to shine, a moment to matter, a moment to make a difference. And that is the earnest sincerity that exists in abundance in Deadpool and Wolverine and within its characters. This sincerity is a trademark of Sean Levy as a director. He feels right at home in this universe with these characters, but because we cannot talk about any of the other surprise characters, let's talk about our team up, our best buddies, Deadpool and Wolverine. Finally seeing Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman working together as Deadpool and Wolverine is an absolute delight on so many levels. Their bickering and banter in this film just as wild and irreverent as it is in real life. They are clearly having a blast making this film. But, like so many of you, I'm sure, my biggest question coming into Deadpool and Wolverine was, how will we bring Hugh Jackman as Wolverine back without cheapening the sacrifice in Logan? And they magically pulled it off. If you have that hero's journey between X-Men and Logan, let's find a Wolverine that never lived up to any of it. And that's the past that haunts him. In a film that is all about the Fox legacy, these heroes are each of them combating their own legacy. What are they leaving behind and what is their purpose? And that is what allows those more vulnerable moments to bring together both Wade and Logan. Even the suit, it's incredible that we finally see Wolverine wearing the suit in live action and they managed to find a meaning for him to wear the suit. What does that suit represent for this Wolverine? That just scratches the surface of all the comic book deep lore that they explore about Logan and about Deadpool, but that's what this franchise has always been. Deep cut references in a movie that is designed to be welcome for everyone. It's also just really cool to see these specifically Fox characters or specific version of these characters from Fox being in these very specific MCU locations surrounded by this very specific MCU iconography and seeing Deadpool and Wolverine these specific Fox versions of the characters in the TVA is so strange but instantly appealing just like it is to see the Deadpool core the Deadpool core is really fun and I cannot say too much more about that but if you're a fan of Deadpool you'll get your fair share of Deadpool in this film. Who else is hilarious is Matthew McFadyen as Paradox. Completely new character, again, that now bridges the gap, but on the MCU end of the bridge, he is terrific. It is hilarious how he brings the TVA and how it easily matches with Deadpool's energy. Not every character stands out in a good way. Emma Corrin is wonderful as Cassandra Nova. She has the right amount of creepiness. She feels powerful and intimidating. And for the first two acts, the film essentially acknowledges and introduces all the interesting concepts and personality traits that make her a fascinating character in the comics. Unfortunately, by the end, we end up reverting back to the basic template of villains that we had so early on in the MCU, but also mostly in the Fox X-Men films. It feels like a waste of the character, a waste of her potential, because they clearly understand who this character is and what this character does, and it is not paid off in any meaningful or interesting way. But there is plenty of action to enjoy. When the action is there, it is gory, it is violent. I have never seen a more comic book accurate Wolverine fighting style than in this movie. You see heads roll off, you see people exploding, you see people's skin being ripped off of them in an instant. It has all the rated r you expect from a Deadpool, whether it is Deadpool and Wolverine fighting together, Deadpool and Wolverine fighting against each other, Deadpool and Wolverine 
doing whatever else they do in this film that I'm not going to spoil. <laughs> Seriously, there were so many spoilers in this film. I have to be really careful. But everything with Cassandra Nova really let me down as far as characters are concerned. This is a film that during its second act, it feels lost. It's introducing more plot points, more elements to later on be used, but it is very empty as far as a plot. It is a light adventure. It is there to be extremely fun, like I said, to bridge these two universes together, and that is exactly what it does. It works without feeling like just lazy pandering because it delivers all the fun, all the violence, all the comic booky wackiness you are hoping for. And where it is messy, simplistic, and light on story, for me, it more than made up for it with memorable gags, making it one of the funniest MCU movies to date, and meaningful character moments. But those are just my spoiler-free thoughts on Deadpool and Wolverine. It's time for you to start the conversation about it in the comments below. Let me know where it ranks in your MCU ranking, X-Men movies ranking, Deadpool trilogy ranking, all of which I reviewed somewhere on the channel at some point in time. There's a tag right up here right now. I'm sure I'll leave others all throughout this video. Or if you just want to stick around and in the future talk more movies and TV with me, this is the place to be, consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. Deadpool and Wolverine is messy, bizarre, imperfect, and a Marvel miracle. Go for the glorious fan service and a self-aware, foul-mouthed, fourth-wall-breaking hilarity and stay for a story that so perfectly taps into heartfelt, emotional catharsis for both Logan and Deadpool all while celebrating the Fox superhero legacy. R.I.P. I'm giving Deadpool and Wolverine a B+. Thank you for watching, Marvel family. Remember to start a conversation about Deadpool and Wolverine in the comments below. And the question for today, what's a superhero team-up you want to see on the big screen? Anything and everything down there. Big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. And I'll be back very soon in more videos. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies, and let's fucking go!